This is just a reminder that pitchforks get restless. They wait beneath the floor of trust the corrupt keep eroding. Okay, look. Shane utilizes a technique that I'm very glad I started utilizing as well, and it's called... All right, y'all, so today we are going to be listening to Mr. Feels himself. Yep, that's right, Shane Coison. It has been a minute, but it is a long time coming, all right? We are going to react to A Tomorrow. I have not seen this one before. I've done plenty of reactions to Shane thus far, but this one I have a feeling is gonna be really good, specifically because it's his most recent poem that he's dropped on his channel, um, which, although I say it's the most recent, it was still two years ago, he posts sporadically, you know, we look forward to it when we got it. Without further ado, let's get started. There will be a tomorrow. There will be a day after all of this. There will be a sunrise that is twin to the sunset. There will be people who get ice cream headaches on hot days. There will be hot days again. And there will be smiles. There will be parades that stretch as far as the miles of gratitude we have for all the people who stood in harm's way. Dang, this is about the pandemic. Yo, okay, so this was like, you know, people in quarantine and people dying of the disease that shall not be named, right? I don't know if it's still going to demonetize me if I say the word. I, it's been ages, but I still can't say it, you feel me? Anyway, um, I see where this is going. Also, him saying that there will be smiles is very telling when you consider the fact that although people were smiling during the pandemic and quarantine remember there was a requirement to wear masks you can't see people smiling when they're wearing masks you know what i'm saying yeah so i see what he did there as far as the miles of gratitude we have for all the people who stood in harm's way the hostages to peril who helped get us through this thing because of them there will be those ready to bring about change because of them we're going to relearn the definition of essential we're going to get a really good look at all the potential we've been wasting by standing still. There will be a tomorrow. And there will be food trucks, dancing, dating, beaches, and Ferris wheels. There will be live concerts, open mics, music, and art. There will be standing ovations. There will be applause. Our hearts are going to look like emergency rooms when we wrap our arms around one another like gauze and apply patience to our wounds. Because it will take time to heal. But through it all, there will be grandmothers who kiss grandkids. There will be fathers who hug sons because handshakes won't cut it anymore. There will be hugging again. There will be hand holding and high fives again. There will be a time when all of this is in our rear view mirror. When we can look forward again and steer this world toward the better it always wanted to be. There will be eyes finally opening up to everything they didn't want to see because there will be questions. There will be, where do we go from here? The one thing becoming clear to all of us is that we have choices. That together our voices can sing a harmony that sounds like justice. This is just a reminder that pitchforks get restless. They wait beneath the floor of trust the corrupt keep eroding. Okay, look. Shane utilizes a technique that I'm very glad I started utilizing as well, and it's called internal rhyme, and he stacks internal rhyme. So you'll notice the end of his lines don't rhyme, but you're hearing a lot of rhyme going on, and you, you might be wondering, what is that he's doing exactly? He's rhyming within lines, and he's rhyming between lines as well, but not at the end, more so somewhere in the middle. And I like that technique specifically because it makes the rhymes unpredictable which allows for a lot of people a more entertaining listening experience all right that's all i really have to say there other than that he made that line about people will know what it really means to be essential right that's uh, in regards to essential workers what jobs literally need to be done for society to survive pretty much all right healthcare workers is one of them so even during the pandemic i was still working um, and that's in part because I, st I worked in healthcare. I worked in both a site clinic and in a group home with uh, mental health clients. You know what I'm saying? Speaking of mental health, mental health for a lot of people got a lot worse during the pandemic, in part because of quarantine, in part because of fear and anxiety about the uh, illness that shall not be named, right? 
Um, and I noticed that there was a massive uptick in the amount of patients that I had to take care of as a result of the pandemic, you know? So, yeah, I'm feeling this poem. This is just a reminder that depression is a self-loading gun we all have to keep checking the safety on. Because when indifference has drawn a chalk outline around our compassion, it means the next thing we lose is each other. We aren't losing strangers. We are losing the people who patrol our streets, put out our fires, take our temperature, check our pulse, collect our trash, drive our trucks, stock our shelves, ring through our groceries, and these are just the ones we see. We are going to lose people we didn't even know we owed our thanks to. We're going to lose the mothers who taught us to stand our ground, the fathers who taught us to tie our shoes. We don't get to choose how much this is going to hurt. We just know that it's going to. But the echo of grief destined to become the anniversary of our loss may cause a tremor in one mind, but an earthquake in another. Doesn't matter what you believe, we can't stop caring about each other now. The person who delivers your mail might not believe what you believe, might hate what you think, but regardless of their feelings, they deliver your mail. That's a bar. Regardless of their feelings towards you, about what you think, about what you believe, they still do you a service. Well, a lot of folks have this sort of not in my backyard mentality. Like, oh, if it's not happening to me and my circle, then it's not really something I need to be worried about. Now, there is a level of healthy dissociation, because if you think too much about the people on the other side of the globe who might be uh, suffering from all sorts of crazy stuff, you'll never be able to sleep at night. So there's some level of healthy dissociation. But like, this isn't, I mean, this is literally in your backyard at this point. You can't pretend like it ain't. You feel me? And that's what he's trying to present. Like those people, you might not know them by name, but you see them on a daily basis and they do stuff to contribute to your life. Yeah, it's these people who are passing away. You feel me? Yeah, so this is a really good way of instilling empathy or at least encouraging empathy in others, right? I'll also say this, the box saying fragile, handle with care. Look, that's, that is not a coincidence that he zoomed in on this view right here, all right? He's talking about handle humans, handle human beings with care as if they're fragile as well, because we are, you know? Let's keep going. But regardless of their feelings, they deliver your mail. Our entire lives are marked by the trail of strangers we have to trust along the way. When we cross the street, we trust strangers to obey the light. Right now, we trust strangers to wash their hands. When we flip a coin, we trust good or bad it lands one way or the other. 50-50 chance that 100% of the outcome we want doesn't mean the coin lands how we wish it would. These black mirrors we keep staring at cast no self-reflection because if we could see ourselves now, we wouldn't look so invisible to one another. But the good news is, there will be a tomorrow. A chance to start looking each other in the eyes again. A day when everyone we miss comes flooding back to us in a tidal wave so big, it's gonna put a crack in the goddamn that's been holding back all the tears. Alone starts to feel like years after the very first day. If we lose each other, we lose our way. In this together doesn't end the day after all of this is over. So if your heart ever starts to pull like a compass, it means the only way back is love. So much love. It's going to eclipse all the hate fear keeps trying to divide us with. Most of the differences we think we have with the people we're told we hate are a myth. Lies became the goldsmith for a tooth greed thought would look cool. Honestly. We are a lot more similar than we think, a lot more similar. A lot of the divisions we have in terms of, you know, politics or culture or background, I'm telling y'all right now, but we're not so similar that there's nothing special about any one of us either. We uh, do have differences that make humanity rather beautiful, you know? Anyway, let's keep going. Thought would look cool. But you want to know something wild? Only a fool knows the price of everything and the value of nothing. If we keep tearing each other down, all that's left of us is dust. So trust that people are best when we are aimed at a common goal. 
We can build this world in dedication to our vices or our virtues. Whatever we choose, the destiny is not today. It is tomorrow. It is each other. It is barbershops, beauty salons, and trivia nights. It is hockey games and halftime shows. Block parties, backyard barbecues, movie theaters, and Halloween. It is everything we want to be, finally letting go of everything we've been. It is laughter, love, compassion, mercy. It is what we choose to make it. There will be a tomorrow. A time for all the ideas whose time has finally come. Because the normal the economy wants us to die for hasn't been working out for everyone. If wealth ever did trickle down, every one of us would drown in the no worries big business gets to live with every day. The way forward begins by putting today behind us. Our history is a footprint left in the dirt to remind us of the missteps we've made. That every choice is a chance to trade in our fate for something better. It can be better. Yesterday cannot be in charge of what tomorrow is set to inherit. So we're going to stockpile hope like toilet paper because we're going to need a lot of it. Enough for all the people who didn't care in the first place to finally give a shit. It will be better tomorrow. There will be skate parks and pool halls. And yes, kids, I'm sorry. There will be homework and bedtime. There will be graduation and prom. There will be powwows and pride. Diwali, Burning Man, and Glastonbury. There will be each other. There will be family. There will be friends. Mark your calendars. Because there will be a tomorrow. When today finally ends. A tomorrow indeed. I always wonder how he gets these people to collaborate with him. You know what I'm saying? Like, now don't get me wrong, he has a big name, for sure. And I'm sure that plays a part in it. You know what I'm saying? But I'll be struggling to find people who want to collaborate with me, you know? So like everything is mostly done by me in terms of the the editing, the music selection. I don't like uh, create the music necessarily, but I do select it and I do uh, like remix it to some degree. Like, bro, it's, it'd be hard out here. Anyway, I really enjoyed this. What were your thoughts on it? Let me know. Um, as for those of you whose lives were greatly affected and altered permanently by um, you know, the pandemic and quarantine, let me know how exactly that went about. You know what I'm saying? Like what led to those differences between how things were before and how they are now for you? I'd like to know, tell me in the comment section. All right. With that being said, hope you all enjoyed and, uh, let me know what other Shane poem I should react to. All right. Deuces. Trigger warning for, <laughs> well, pretty much everything. October or not, I've never been known to sugarcoat topics. After all, there are more than enough cavities and diabetes going around as is, so I'll get straight to the point. The worst fears don't come from fantasy, but reality. And yours has been a psychodrama filled with recycled trauma. Life has provided you with more nightmare fuel than Friday the 13th, Five Nights at Freddy's, and Freddy Krueger films combined. So rather than waste time, let's talk about it. Let's talk about the...